I'm here at Vox Jason with Haddy to talk about Kotlin. You're giving a talk about Kotlin in production. So yes, I am. For those of you who don't know, Kotlin is a language that was unveiled by JetBrains for the JVM, which specifically um, works really well with Android development. Yeah, so it works very well with Android development because it's compatible with Java 6. And it's given that it's kind of concise and cuts down a boilerplate code, we've had tremendous success in the Android market. But it was never originally developed for Android. So it's, it's an industrial uh, language that we created primarily at the beginning for ourselves. And we don't do Android development. We do desktop and we do server-side de development. So it is, it's broad in terms of usage. And um, it's, um, it's much easier. I find I was playing with it last night. It's a lot more intuitive than languages like Scala, for example, because it's very like Java. Yeah, and we've done that on purpose. We try to make it very similar to languages well-known, such as Java, C Sharp, JavaScript and kind of get rid of some of the boilerplate code of those aspects. It is, uh, you could say, some people say it's very similar to Scala as well, and in fact it is because it's been inspired by Scala as it's been inspired by many other languages, but we are more restrictive in that we don't allow many things that Scala allow. So we try and, we believe in that way it kind of helps prevent complexity in code bases by giving too much versatility into what you can do with the language. So 1.1 is in beta yeah. with, uh, I mean, we don't have a timeline yet, do we, for release, but... I, to be honest, I mean, I think it's going to be sometime in the next um, quarter, in this quarter, hopefully. Um, I don't know how official that is. If it's unofficial, though, then I just didn't say that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but we, we've hit beta now, so we're kind of polishing it up now. What can we expect in 1.1? So there's a bunch of new features. Uh, I think one of the biggest things are coroutines, which we're tagging right now as experimental. So it's it's there. We've developed it, and we've got library support for it. Uh, but we've, there's kind of like a compiler flag that says this is experimental because we really want to see people use it and then decide, okay, we've gone the right way. And one of the aspects of coroutines, I mean, you know about asynchronous programming and how yeah. people are trying to avoid the, the, all the blocking. So instead of going down one specific route, like for instance, C Sharp has gone down the async await keyword route, what we've decided to do is basically implement the gener general coroutines and then provide library functions on top of that. So you have like, we have bindings to Rx, we have async await, we have yield. All of these things, however, they're not keywords as part of the language, but they're just library functions. And the way that Kotlin is as a programming language, it actually allows you to have very succinct functions that often feel part of the language, but they're actually not, they're just functions. What else can we expect? So we've got type aliases. Basically, you can say like one type is the equivalent of another in terms of name. It's like a, giving it a different name, right? So I can say if I'm using, for instance, um, a, a string to represent a customer name, I could do like string equal, you know, customer name equals string, and that at runtime is still a string. Okay. But during, uh, you know, as you're writing the code for clarity, you, it kind of gives you better understanding of what it is that you're dealing with. It gives you more context. Uh, we have also, we've been working very hard on the JavaScript side. So Kotlin, when we first shipped 1.0, main target was JVM yeah. and JavaScript was experimental. And now with 1.1, you know, we're removing the tag of experimental on JavaScript. So you can also target JavaScript. Uh, what else? We've got a little bit more things in terms of deconstruction of lambdas and uh, variables, so you can kind of like deconstruct them in multiple variables to, again, increase the readability of it. Yeah. Uh, targeting more JDK 8 specific, so if you, given Kotlin has a standard library, now we're saying, okay, if you're going to target Java 8, we will optimize some of the things that we're using uh, with with your code, right? You tell us you're not using Java 6, so we won't use like anonymous classes for representing lambdas. We'll actually use Java 8 lambdas. So it's so. cut down to the most used features? Uh, y well, it's, it's kind of saying that if you don't require backwards compatibility, then we'll take advantage of that. Okay. Yep. So it's like making, instead of having one standard library, we're now providing you the standard library with the target that you want to hit. So yeah, so those are some of the things that we've uh, added there's also some improvements around 
uh, sealed classes. So Kotlin doesn't have the concept of abstract data types, where you know a type can have uh, be of one type or another, right? Yeah. And so we, sorry, abstract algebraic data types. Makes so no it's it's <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's like you know, but they're always ADT. I keep saying uh, abstract. Um, so we've. The way that you would do it in Kotlin is you would have uh, classes, and then inside those classes you would have kind of like in inner, inner, inner classes, but classes contained that inherit from your outer class. It that's still possible, and then you would add the sealed keyword, which would basically close off all of the hierarchy, saying that you know that you're not going to get another class that inherits from this upper class, right? Okay. So then you could kind of simulate the algebraic data type. So that is still possible. But it kind of people were saying, you know, this doesn't look that great having all of this code inside a single class. So now we allow you to separate the classes into a single file. And then just it just makes it nicer to read and, and kind of maintain in a sense as well. Because in Kotlin 1.1, you could have functions and classes in the same or different files. Is that right? Yeah, you can still do that. Uh, you can do that. And you can al you could always do that. Um, what we're saying now is that if you you're trying to create sealed classes all of those subclasses don't have to be part of the outer class they can be outside of that outer class but in the same file it's restricted to the same file